In this tutorial, I'm going to show you to do a very simple GIF animation, like you're seeing here, where I have the star moving from left to right. And frankly, I'm just making this video because it took me about an hour to figure this out, and uh, I don't want to have to try and relearn all this again, so hopefully you guys enjoyed it as well. The first thing we want to do, of course, is go into Photoshop, and at this point, I want to have a background layer that's going to stay consistent throughout my GIF. So in this case, I have this targeting reticle. Once I have my background set, then I can add in my moving object, in this case, the star. So the star is on its own layer, and if I hide the background layer, you'll see it's actually transparent. It's just uh, a white star there, and you can turn it into a PNG usually and uh, screw around with that to get it similar. Or you can even just create your own star. So if I create a new layer, just take a white paintbrush, like a white dot, that would work as well. And then I can move this from left to right, up to down, same thing with my star layer. I can click and move it around independently from the background layer. So once you've gotten to this stage where you have a moving object on top, and it, that's all it is, then you have your background layer. Now we're ready to actually create our animation. So we need to go up to Window, and then click on Timeline. Then we should have a button down here. In this case, it might say Create Video Timeline. So you want to click the little arrow and change it to Create Frame Animation. Then we'll just click the button and automatically we have our timeline now. The first thing we want to do is just click on the uh, duplicate selected frames. And once we click that, we have a frame 2 over here that's been added. We don't really have to worry about that. All I want to do is click on my star layer and then I want to move this wherever I want it to end up in the frame. In this case, I'm doing a very simple animation from left to right. So I'm just going to drag this way over here. That's all I have to do. Then. I'm going to come down to the little, looks like a comet icon. It's a little uh, tweens animation frame. So I'll click on that. And all I should have to do is put the frames to add. So you can do five, and it would be a very quick animation. I'm going to do more, though, so it drags out a little bit further. So let's say 20. And then I'll hit OK. And all of a sudden, all of our layers are listed below. So I can click the play button, and we'll see our animation. So that was very simple and easy to do. And to be honest, the first time I did something like this a couple months ago, I had to manually move the star each frame. And frankly, I don't remember how I did that, but it was a pain in the butt to do. So this way is a lot faster, to say the least. Now, all I have to do now is maybe even change the duration. Right now they're on zero seconds, so there's no delay. But I might put it to 0.1. So if I click on my first layer, hold down the Shift key, click on my last layer, they're all selected. And now I can click where it says zero seconds. If I change it to anything, it will apply to every single layer. So I'll put 0.1, and then I can play this through again. And it's kind of choppy, so in your instance, you might want to leave it on zero, but that's up to you. Once we've done our simple animation, now we're ready to finally export it. And then I'll go to File, Export. And frankly, I tried to do the Export As here, and for whatever reason, it wouldn't work uh, when I tried to make this a GIF. So uh, if you wanted to go that route, you can try it, but in my experience, it wasn't working. So what I had to do was either render this as a video or do save for web legacy. Now, for my own personal use, I have this video here. So instead of being in a GIF format, it's in a video format, and that actually is what I need for what I'm doing. So you might want to do that instead. Instead of actually creating a GIF, you can go to File, Export, Render Video, and you can turn this into a video file using whatever settings you want. That's the first way to do this, and that's what worked for me. But if you want to make an actual GIF, we'll go up to File, Export. I'm going to do Save for Web Legacy. Again, I don't know why we have to do the legacy version for this to work in my particular example, but that's the way it is. So I can always click on Preview here, and this should automatically open probably your web browser, and now we can see an example of the animation. Now I can close out of this, and you have a lot of different options here. When I'm on your GIF, you want to make sure you are on GIF, of course. You can choose different presets. These are going to be lower quality, but there's not really that much information here, so I'm not worried about it. And everything else should be set. You really shouldn't have to worry about anything here. So we'll just click Save. And you can do this either HTML and images or images only. But if I do this, you can save an HTML file. So I probably want to leave this just on images. And then I'll click Save. And this is just saying I already have one made, so I'll just replace it. And now if I go to my actual GIF file here, Windows Photo should be able to play it, just like so. 
And just for the heck of it, let's right click and open with Internet Explorer and make sure it works there as well. Indeed it does. So that's how you'll do a very simple animation here inside of Photoshop. And as you can see, the big trick was simply uh, creating our layer on top here that's gonna move. We start with our beginning position, we move it to the end, and then we click that uh, tweening button and it automatically did the rest for us. Then we went to File, Export, and we either chose Render Video or we did Save for Web and saved it as a GIF. And uh, hopefully this video helped you out. I know I'll probably have to refer back to this in a couple months when I'm trying to do this again. Uh, so thanks for watching and uh, I'll catch you in the next tutorial.